terms of summer sanders and samuel smiles your biggest challenge in a race is yourself you are often racing against time you are frequently running everything through your mind you are always competing against preconceived ideas it's not really the person next to you that you worry about the battle of life is in most cases fought uphill and to win it without struggle or perhaps to win it without honor if there were no difficulties there would be no success if there were nothing to struggle for there would be nothing to be achieved a very good morning to one and all present here on behalf of the mood co society law college dehradun i extend a warm welcome to our chief guest of the day honorable miss justice indira banerjee judge supreme court of india the chancellor of uttaranchal university mr jitendra joshi the vice chancellor professor dr devendra pathak dean of law college dehradun and patron of mood co society professor dr rajesh bahugna head of law college dehradun and our worthy chairperson professor dr poonam rawat the faculty advisory board of the mood co society other faculty members of law college dehradun the members of all the societies of law college dehradun and all the participants who chose to be a part of this event even amidst the harsh circumstances we welcome you to the 5th edition of the national mood court competition on constitutional law focusing on biodiversity laws and other laws related to it organized by the mood court society under the aegis of law college dehradun faculty of uttaranchal university an event that provides a platform to students who are to be the future advocates of our country to channelize their thought process and develop analytical thinking on that note i would like to call upon professor dr rajesh bahugna to unfold the event like all the past editions to address the participants and introduce our chief guest for the day thank you thank you so much on the occasion of this fifth edition of law college dehradun national mood court competition 2021 today chief guest honorable ms justice indra banerjee judge supreme court of india honorable chancellor of the university sri jitendra joshi ji honorable vice chancellor of the university professor devendra pathak head of law college dehradun and chairperson of mood court society professor poonam rawat ma'am faculty advisory board all president vice president secretary and all the office bearers of mood court society faculty members present here all the participants and audience of fifth lcd nmcc our alumni in particular our judicial officers alumni joining from the entire country ladies and gentlemen i extend my greetings to all of you i take this privilege and opportunity to welcome you all on this occasion you are welcome on the behalf of law college dehradun mood court society on the behalf of entire uttaranchal university family you all are welcome in dev bhumi of uttarakhand ladies and gentlemen i am asked to introduce our today's chief guest so let me tell you introduction of honorable ms justice indra banerjee is not new to the legal fraternity of india however honorable ms justice indra banerjee was born on 24th september 1957 lots of pass indian school certificate examination from loreto house calcutta graduated with history honor from presidency college then affiliated to calcutta university and eventually her llb from college of law calcutta university justice banerjee got enrolled as an advocate on 5th of july 1985 a lot a lady she practiced both in the original and appellate side of calcutta high court and in all the branches of law except criminal law with appearance in supreme court other courts and tribunal 
her leadership was elevated as permanent judge of Calcutta High Court on 5th of February 2002. Leadership also served as the chairman of Calcutta High Court Service Commission for almost four years and officiated as executive chairman of West Bengal State Legal Services Authority for almost a year. It is very remarkable to note that her leadership was nominated in July 2013 by the then Chief Justice of India for a week-long training in judicial administration at the Civil Service College, Singapore. Her leadership was appointed judge of the Delhi High Court on 8th of August 2016 and served on various roles, including the chairperson of the Delhi State Legal Services Authority. Finally, on 5th April 2017, her leadership was shown in as Chief Justice of Madras High Court and eventually got elevated as Judge of Supreme Court on 7th of August 2018. Her leadership tenure at the Apex Court has been very remarkable and her leadership has been part of many remarkable notable judgment pronounced by the Honorable Apex Court. To quote a few, uh, like uh, Susila Agrawal versus State and City Delhi, Rajendra Diwan, Pradeep Kumar, West UP Sugar Mill Association, Mukesh versus State, State of Punjab versus Devendra Singh, R. Raj Gopal versus Tamil Nadu, Excel Court Carriers versus Franklin Aviation Services Private Limited, Nazir Mohammed versus J. Kamla, Hare Krishna Mandir Trust versus State of Maharashtra, S. Rojini Amma versus Pille Sri Kumar, Pramod Sirabhavan Pamar versus State of Maharashtra, and Sarvapalli Ramaya versus District Collector Koem Tour, and so on. Your ladyship. Law College Dehradun Moot Court Society, participants and audience of fifth LCD NMCC, and entire UU family is honored with your benign presence. And I indeed feel proud and honored to introduce her lordship before the audience. And I take this privilege and opportunity to welcome you, Her Lordship, from the bottom of my heart. You are welcome in Law College Dehradun on behalf of entire Uttaranchal University family and on the behalf of and from the land of God and Goddess, Devbhumi, Uttarakhand. You are welcome, Her Lordship. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, Law College Dehradun, it was established on 1st August 2002. And later on, with the passing of Uttaranchal University Act in 2012-13, it became Uttaranchal University. As far as Moot Court Society of the Law College Dehradun is concerned, it is as gold old as the college itself. And the main function of this society is not only to organize intramural as well as national events on this platform, but at the same time to groom the students so as to take effective part in the different mood code competition being taking place in India and abroad. This competition, which is famous in the name of Law College Dehradun Moot Court Competition on Constitutional Law is basically a competition which is focused on the constitutional matter. But at the same time, it has always been our endeavors to come up with certain contemporary issues as part of the moot proposition. Like this time, we have taken it, the situation of pandemic, and as well as biodiversity, and as well as how the 
local peoples particularly tribes react when the attack is considered to be on their uh, recognition or in that particular scheduled area with this we have come up this problem and at this time i will not take the much of much of the time and all the best to all the participants and also team mcs under the leadership of anna nupriya thank you thank you so much thank you so much sir for your words now i request our chief guest for the day honorable miss justice indira banerjee to address the gathering <clears throat> professor devendra athak vice chancellor uttaranchal uttaranchal university professor rajesh bahuguna dean uh, law college dehradun uttaranchal university ms anna anupriya president mutkot society law college dehradun the office bearers and faculty members of the dehradun law college and uttaranchal university the last but not the least my dear students for whom i am here today ladies and gentlemen it is a privilege for me to inaugurate the fifth national moot court competition 2021 organized by law college dehradun which is a faculty of uttaranchal university now i congratulate you for organizing a moot court on a topic which is extremely important today as you all know you are all prepared the year 2010 was declared the year of biodiversity from 1st january 2010 till 31st December 2010 and then commenced the decade of biodiversity which was from 2011 to 2020 just as the decade of biodiversity was coming to an end came the pandemic covid-19 broke out at wuhan in china and the entire world became topsy turvy as a result and we are facing the consequences today in india where we find an exponential rise in the number of covid cases where people are dying at this time i think the topic which has been chosen is extremely important now on moot court competitions the object of moot courts needs no emphasis at all moot courts are extremely important because without actually appearing in a court of law the students get the feel of actually appearing in a court of law just by way of a small diversion for many years education of law was a neglected branch in this country i need not refer to law commission reports 
some of which contain very derogatory remarks with regard to law education in general and persons, the majority of the law students who were produced by law colleges and universities up to a particular point of time. Fortunately, so far as law education is concerned, things have undergone a great change. At one point of time, law was perhaps studied by th those students, except a handful who actually intended to practice in courts or who aspired for taking judicial service examinations. It was generally chosen by those students who could not secure admission anywhere else. When a reference was being made to my particulars, a reference was made to the college from where I graduated. In our times, we didn't have a five-year law course. I still remember when I joined the law college, a classmate of mine, a very friendly classmate, asked my name and then asked me which college I was from. Presidency College happened to be one of the better colleges in Calcutta, if not one of the best, so far as general branches of study was concerned. And it offered only honor subjects and not past subjects. This student asked me, Indira, you're from Presidency, you didn't secure honors. I was absolutely taken aback. But hey, what sort of a question was this? So I said, no, I did. Then you're studying law. You could have secured admission in the master's course, master's degree course. I said, yes, I could have, and I, in fact, I was pursuing my master's course, but it, as it was no longer permissible to do two courses together, I had to give up my master's to join law. This was the mindset, so far as law education is concerned. Today, thankfully, and I feel proud to say so, that law has become the most coveted stream for students. Even to get admission is difficult. You have to appear for a highly competitive test in order to secure admission in law colleges. The standard of law education has improved tremendously. And on this occasion, I cannot but remember Professor Madhav Menon, who was considered to be the father of, you know, moot court in India, who emphasized the importance of moot court. And I fortunately had the occasion to meet him on a number of occasions personally. When he was with the National University of Juridical Sciences in Kolkata, and when he was with the National Judicial Academy in Popal, and I gained immensely from the various discussions which I had with now coming to moot court. A moot court makes a student, the, the, what the student has learned complete. It involves deep study into the subject matter. 
a student participating in a moot court is prepared to tackle questions. And most of these moot courts are judged by sitting and retired judges, legal luminaries. So even before you actually come to the court and you commence practice, you get the feel of appearing in a court of law, doing very difficult cases. Look at the subject which has been chosen. It is such a recent happening subject which very few people know about. When I was in the law college, even the Stockholm conference had not taken place. Environmental law, what was environmental law? We probably didn't even know when we were at the law college. But today, a lot of importance is given. What do we understand by diversity? Variation, different forms, different kinds, and by biodiversity, we mean the various forms of life, human, human beings, animals, plants, algae, living organisms, even non-living organisms things which impact the ecology. It's so important today. And then in the context of the constitution, I was just glancing through your topic. It also involves the question of varieties of a law. How do you judge a law? in the context of the constitution. Practical form of study. Yes, we all know of Article 13 of the Constitution of India, that any law which is violative of a fundamental right is void. There is more to it. The legislative body which enacts the law, does it have the competence? We have a state list. We have a, we have a union list, which is list one of the seventh schedule. We have the state list and we have a concurrent list. Now, if a subject matter belongs exclusively to the state list, the union cannot legislate. If it belongs exclusively to the union uh, list, the state cannot legislate. What happens when it become, belongs to the concurrent list? When it is in the concurrent list, both the state and the uh, uh, union can legislate. What happens when there is a conflict? How do you resolve the conflict? Therefore, you know, when you're participating in a moot court of this kind, you look into every aspect. It is not just a superficial reading of the constitution. You have to think, what is arbitrariness? Can a statute be questioned on the ground of arbitrariness? I suppose it can, because arbitrariness has been held to be a part of Article 14, it, uh, it is an essential ingredient 
of Article 14 that uh, all action has to be non-arbitrary. Arbitrariness offends Article 14. But how do you decide what is arbitrary? And the extent of arbitrariness to invalidate a law. This is where your precedents laid down by the Supreme Court become, and by the various high courts, become very important. Therefore, you study the Constitution, you study the precedent, you study the law in details. What exactly is excessive delegation? When can a power set to be exercised without any guidelines? What is the difference between a provision which is bad in law? Bad in law means constitutional law because the virus only has to be judged on the anvil of the constitution. And a provision which is which may be valid, but the exercise of power may be arbitrary. Can such a provision be struck down? Per se. Therefore, it is one thing to say that the provision is ultra-virus, the Constitution. The provision itself has to be struck down. And it's another thing to say that the exercise of power under any particular provision is arbitrary, not in accordance with law, and therefore has to be struck down. the importance of the judiciary in our polity hardly needs emphasis. We have a very vibrant, long written constitution, which goes into very great details. The preamble to the constitution beautifully summarizes what are the objects of the Constitution? And there are provisions which elaborate on those objects. So you have the fundamental rights. You have the directive principles of the state policy. And you have the fundamental duties which people unfortunately often forget. They may not be enforceable strictly, but when one is deciding the question of arbitrariness of any disciplinary action, even the fundamental duties may be of relevance. Now, in the, in the context of the moot court competition, which are the provisions of the Constitution which are relevant other than the lawmaking powers conferred by the Constitution? Article 21, though on a plain reading, only says that no person can be deprived of his life or personal liberty without authority of law has been given a very purposive and liberal interpretation by the courts, particularly the Supreme Court of India. And this right to life has been interpreted to include the right to the basic amenities of life. 
and the right to a clean atmosphere, free from pollution, the right to drinking water, pollution-free drinking water. These have also been held to be concomitants of the right to life conferred under Article 21 of the Constitution of India. That apart, you cannot forget Article 29, sub-Article 1 of the Constitution of India, which reads, any section of the citizens residing in the territory of India or any part thereof having a distinct language, script, or culture of its own shall have the right to conserve the same. So this gives various tribal communities residing in hill areas, in forest areas, elsewhere, all over the country, a distinct right which has to be preserved. We cannot possibly forget the directive principles of state policy. What about your artic Article 38, which says, state is to secure a social order for the promotion of welfare of the people. And this welfare of the people obviously includes a clean environment, preservation of biodiversity, which is so essential to life. Then you have your Article 46, which provides for the promotion of educational and economic interests of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and weaker sections. You have your Article 47, which casts a duty on the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living and to improve public health. Therefore, even to ensure that a pandemic is controlled, that people are not affected is a duty of every government. And also I would say every, the duty of every student. So the students before me also have a duty to ensure that they are masked when they move out in public, when they come into contact with other persons. And as citizens of this country, to ensure that their peers do it and the others do it, to create awareness, create legal awareness, and also social awareness and civic awareness, which you can do, obviously, when you have a very good grounding of the law yourself. Then, of course, you have your Article 48 of the Constitution which says that the state shall endeavor to organize agriculture and animal husbandry on modern and scientific lines and shall in particular take steps for preserving and improving the breeds and prohibiting the slaughter of cows and calves and other milch and draft cattle. Article 48A 
which provides for protection and improvement of environment. Very, very important. This was introduced by the 42nd Amendment Act, which came in 1976. The state shall endeavor to protect and improve the uh, environment and to safeguard the forests and the wildlife of the country. And now we come to the fundamental duties under Article 51A. And we can perhaps straight go to 51A subarticle G, which says, it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, and wildlife, and to have compassion for living creatures. So there can hardly be any doubt that biodiversity and its maintenance are extremely important for sustaining life on Earth, for sustainable development. A few of the reasons, the few area, a few areas of importance of the of bio, biodiversity are. It is important for ecological stability. It has its economic importance. Biodiversity is a reservoir of resources <clears throat> for the manufacture of various items, food, medicine, cosmetic products, so on and so forth. Ethical, there is an ethical importance of biodiversity because all living beings have the right to exist and humans should ensure that no species is extinct. Biodiversity preserves different cultures different forms of spiritual heritage. Therefore, the, the, the need to conserve biodiversity can hardly be emphasized. India is a land of diversity. Now you, have, you are in Uttarakhand, in the Himalayas. It's a beautiful state, which I have visited often as a tourist. You have the hills, you have the desert in Western India, you have the Indo-Gangetic Plain, you have the plateau, you have the coastal areas, and all these areas have their own flora and fauna and different kinds of plants. You have the Western Ghats, you have the Eastern Ghats. Now, let us just take a brief look at the historical background of the biodiversity laws which we have. The first world conference to make the environment a major issue was held in Stockholm way back in the year 1972. And a resolution was adopted which is referred to as the Stockholm Declaration and Action Plan for Human Environment. The action plan 
can be uh, divided into roughly three categories. The first category is assessment, impact assessment of the, the assessment of the environment. The next is the management of environment. How to protect the environment, how to improve the environment. And the third are the international measures to support assessment and management activities carried out at the national and international levels. Now, one of the major results of the Stockholm Conference was the creation of the United Nations Environment Program. This was followed by a series of other conferences and conventions, including the Kyoto Conference. I will not go into the details for paucity of time. Maybe we could discuss the conventions in detail on a later occasion. But the convention on biological diversity was an important convention which was adopted in 1992 with the aim of conserving biodiversity, ensuring sustainable use of its products, sustainable use of the resources of the earth, and guaranteeing the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits resulting from the use of genetic resources After this, there have been further conferences which led to the declaration of the year 2010 as the year of bio, uh, biodiversity. And then to the decade commencing 2011 as the decade of biodiversity. In India, in 19, way back in 1971, the University Grants Commission, in collaboration with various other organizations, conducted a symposium on the development of environment studies in the Indian universities. Several environment protection legislations existed. There were more legislations enacted. After the Stockholm Conference, you have the Wild Life Act of 1972, the Water Act of 1974, Air Act of 1981, Within five years of the Stockholm Declaration, the Constitution of India was amended to include protection and improvement of environment as a constitutional mandate. Today, you have the Green National Green Tribunal Act, and you have the tribunals doing their level best to protect environment. I think I have taken much more time than the time which was allotted to me. I am extremely sorry, but I wish all the participants the very best. It is important to participate, whether you win or not, which team wins it's, is secondary. And I wish all the students, those who are particip participating, those who are not participating, 
a very bright future in law. I started off by emphasizing on the importance of the judiciary under the Constitution of India. We have an independent, impartial judiciary. It is the guardian, considered to be the guardian of the fundamental rights. And when we talk of the judiciary, it is not the judges alone. It is the judges, the lawyers, other stakeholders, everyone together who constitute the judiciary. Law is very important. We may or may not realize, apart from your wildlife protection act, apart from your biodiversity act of 2002 and the various specific acts which you have, even without realizing we are dealing with the law from the morning, from morning till night. Family relationships are governed by family laws. You start your morning breakfast, maybe with a packet of conflicts and the dealer may have supplied you with stale conflicts which are not fit to be eaten. With the pandemic, all of us have become dependent on the computer. The computer which you buy may not be working. So you may have to approach, approach the consumer forums constituted for protection of the interest of the consumer. When you're dealing with various people, including the people who even work for you, you are dealing with the Contract Act and various other laws. You students have a very important role to play as knowledgeable citizens, young citizens of the country. You have a role in spreading awareness, legal awareness, social awareness, civic awareness. And I do hope many of, many of you will opt to come into the judiciary and make the judiciary contribute to enhancement of judicial excellence. And make the judiciary a vibrant, meaningful judiciary, which effectively protects the fundamental and other constitutional rights and legal rights of the people of this country. I also, on this occasion, wish every one of you good health and the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a delight to hear you speak today. And thank you for all your good wishes and the life experiences that you shared with us today. It went. Thank you also for gracing out the time from your busy schedule to be present in our event today. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are honored to be in your presence today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, moving on, I request Miss Anna Anupriya. President of Moot Court Society to address the participants and formally declare the event open. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My greetings to Honorable Miss Justice Indira Banerjee, Judge Supreme Court of India and our chief guest for the occasion. It is a manner of immense honor, especially after the profound inaugural, uh, inaugural address to host this competition for the fourth time in a row and for the second time in the capacity of the president of the Moot Court Society under whose name and umbrella our college organizes this competition. My sincere greetings to Professor Devendra Patak, Vice Chancellor Uttaranchal University, Professor Dr. Rajesh Bahuguna, Dean of Law College Dehradun, as well as the patron of Moot Court Society, Professor Dr. Poonam Rawat, Head of Law College Dehradun and Chairperson of the Moot Court Society, 
faculty members and students of the college and participants of the fifth edition of Law College Dehradun's National Moot Court Competition. Although this is the first time the event is being held online with everyone miles away, the participants, the judges, and even the organizers and the guests all in different parts of the country, yet connected through the common interest in legal academics. It is said that great dreams are never fulfilled. They are always transcended. And having said that, I understand that it's difficult in the pursuit of a dream to take account of the larger picture, especially when people have worked so hard towards the fulfillment of that dream. Nevertheless, fulfilling a commitment to come forward and perform in these immensely troubled times that we face collectively does not just take hard work and preparation, but also sheer courage and respect towards one's commitments, which goes a long way to show one's strength of character. On that note of prior congratulations to all the participants in the capacity of the president of organizing committee, I hereby declare the competition open. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I now request our vice chancellor, Professor Dr. Devinder Pathak, sir, to deliver a vote of thanks. Your Lordship, Justice, Ms. Indira Banerjee, sitting judge of the Supreme Court, as the chief guest of this morning, our honorable, most honorable, our chancellor of the university, Mr. Jitendra Josiji, our dean of law college, Dehradun, Professor Rajesh Rahuguna, our head of the department of law college, Dehradun, Dr. Poonam Rawat, Anup Priya, the convener of the Smooth Court Society, and all our faculty members, my dear dear students, and all other students who are here in the audience. Really, it's a privilege and honor for me. And I feel I had probably never had any loss of words of appreciation. But today, I find that my, uh, I'm not getting the proper word to express our heartful thanks to Honorable Justice Indira Banerjee, that she has really set the ball rolling and the crux of the subject that we are going to discuss in the moot court. She has so beautifully with her brilliant exposition, citing so many references, so many cases, the consistent provisions. She has really led the way forward for a very fruitful and meaningful discussion. The way she has delivered her, and the wisdom, the reservoir of knowledge and wisdom that you could really make out. Our students, really, you are really lucky. And we at the Tanch University, we feel very much indebted that Honorable Justice herself had agreed to be a part of this moot court and just bless our students in this fifth moot court competition, national moot court competition. Really, the situation probably the pandemic may probably come to an end shortly. But this problem of ecology and environment, the subject that we have chosen the biodiversity, really, this is a common incubation to all the conscious humanity all over the world. While our desire to leave is natural and common to all, really, it poses a whole context. The future of the human life was never so much blurred and also the possibility so much distorted. As we have at present, the biodiversity is causing so much of concern. The, the guidelines that came from the Stockholm, so many legislations also have come, especially our Indian constitution. And as our Honorable Justice Singh has told, that the Indian constitution is so vibrant, it has really assimilated all the aspects of the human living. Maybe it is not only the human being, the plants and the water, the air, and all flora and fauna, and everything really living and see has even included the non living, such is the magnanimous and such is the broader outlook and vision our constitution is having. And with the interpreter and a custodian of law, there were so many things really happening in, the, in our own country 
but for the ethics court that they have timely intervened and they really have taken measures which have really gone to emancipate the human mankind, especially in India, we have got lot much of relief with the various judgments that have been pronounced by our government, our judges of the ethics court. And we really feel very, very indebted that with these things when we tell you, we really are able to conserve our ethnic culture, values, and all parts that we have with the freedom, the right to freedom that has been given in the Constitution from both Article 14 to 19 and in some other provisions, directed principles of the state policy. All those things are very, very secure, only because of Honorable Justice, that Ms. Indira Banerji, C has been in the landmark judgment because many of the judgments that our uh, dean, Professor Ajayas Kohuna, C has quoted, that really has a broken light and that has really been a mind stroke. So, once again, I take this opportunity of expressing my heartily thanks on behalf of all of the Granja University family, on behalf of all the participants of the Moot Court, and on behalf of the all our faculty members. Really, we are very much interested in them, and we look forward to your guidance and uh, the blessings of the students in future also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. With that, I thank all the participants from around the country for keeping up the spirit of the competition and being with us today. We wish you a very good luck for the upcoming rounds. And with that, we shall begin the mood proceedings. Thank you, everyone, for coming.